But the real believers said, Sadaq Allah wa Rasuluh. This is what Allah wa Rasuluh has promised us. Promised us hardship and patience. So what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says he has sent rihan wa junood alam turuha. Winds and soldiers you do not see and they are the one who conquered. And subhanallah, you know, as a small child reading this story, it says the believers conquered the, the uh, unbelievers. But here when we analyze, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hazam al ahzab wahda. Allah alone is the one who destroyed this enemy. He sent the winds and he sent his soldiers to destroy. And that's why going forward when the Muslims have realized the seas is over and they start taking their military clothes and Rasulullah is taking his military clothes off, Gibril alayhi salam asked Rasul, what are you doing? He says, well, the Ahzab has gone. He says, no, you have to go and the angels are still fighting. Subhanallah, the angels are still fighting. You have to go to Bani Quraiza and because they wanted to betray the Muslimin, go and deal with them. Subhanallah, the angels are still fighting. When is this part of history, why aren't we taught this part and told in Tansurullah and Surkum? We work for the sake of Allah, He will support us. Rather than, we are always told about the materialistic things. Only the materialistic things, and it's important. But the essence of the fact is in Tansurullah and Surkum. This is the true thing. How the true facts of our history. The victory is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because of the courage we think. And yes, they were courageous, but it isn't the courage because the enemy had a lot of courageous people too and a lot of strong people. <coughs> so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, جَاءَتْكُمْ جُنُودٌ فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا رِيحًا وَجُنُودٌ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ When the soldiers came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the winds and other soldiers that you do not see. Then we go forward after Al-Khandaq. We go to Al-Hudaybiyah when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims were going to uh, do Al-Umrah. They've decided they missed Mecca so much and they want to go home to do Al-Umrah. So how many Muslims? They say 1,300 believers are going with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to do Al-Umrah. And that's when Quraysh said, this will, uh, this, uh, this will look bad for us that Muhammad and the Muslimin has come into Mecca. We should stop them. And they reach a treaty that the believers should go back this year and come back next year to do, uh, to do Al-Umrah. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepts. And as we said at the time, the Mu'mineen were upset. Why Ya Rasulullah, you promised us to go and visit our homes and visit Mecca and do Al-Umrah? And you accept a peace treaty and you go back. And comes the ayah in the Quran, the surah, surah al-Fatih. Inna fatahna laka fatha mubina. We have given you a great victory. The great victory with the signing of the treaty, because the victory is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have given you a great victory. So if we look forward after the Quraysh had uh, violated this treaty three years later, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes to open Mecca in 10,000 Muslims. So if we look at the time of the peace treaty, the Muslims were going to do Umrah three years earlier in 1300. When the peace is spread and everybody has a choice to choose because the peace treaty said those who wants to be unbelievers could be and those who wants to be Muslims could be. People chose Islam and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went back into an army of 10,000. And he had appointed four leaders of the Muslim army to go into Mecca. Three from Al-Muhajirin and one from Al-Ansar. And as the armies are ready to go into Mecca, the leader, the Muslim, the army leader from Al-Ansar said, today is the day of revenge. We go into Mecca now and revenge. So when it reaches the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, no, today is no day of revenge. This is the day that we respect Mecca and the Muslim army goes mostly in peace and very little fighting. And here Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, <coughs> Uh, when the Muslim army was going, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who stopped. There is no fighting. Yes, there was a few uh, a small uh, uh, fighting, but there was no war to go into Mecca. Why? Because it was Allah's will. There is no fighting. He stopped the fighting. Subhanallah. And it is peace going into Mecca is peace. 
And as we know, when our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought the people of Mecca and asked them, what do you think I am doing with you? They said, Akhun Kareem wa Ibn Akhin Kareem. A good and kind brother and a good and kind uh, nephew. And he lets them all flee. This is Islam, if we read, we see there is no battles. The Muslims themselves didn't want it. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, the victory is from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. But the important one, in Allah we have to obey Allah and we have to take care and respect Islam and respect our religion and in Tansurullah and so And a small story as we talk respect. When I was flying back from the airport in Egypt and I have a poor porter standing beside me taking my bags at the airport, they had some German people and they had their dog. And the nice treatment the dog had in the Cairo airport and the porter looking at me and said, Subhanallah, our people don't get this gentle and kind treatment. And my answer back to him was, these are people respected themselves, so their animals became respected. And we don't respect each other, so we're not respected and our animals are not respected. If you go back home and you see how the animals are treated. Why? Because we stopped respecting ourselves. We stopped learning our Islam and we think Islam is only prayers and the beard and the soap and we left everything else. We don't respect each other, so we are demeaned. And yet their dog, you look at the dog and how well he was treated and how well he's fed and how well he's taken care of. Why? Because they respected themselves. So when do we go back and respect ourselves too? So even if it's not for our sake and our children's sake, for the sake of these poor animals, Subhanallah. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, all the children of Adam commit mistakes and the best of those who commit mistakes is those who ask for forgiveness. So let's pray to Allah and ask for his forgiveness, inshaAllah. الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله and we go forward to the time of the battles of الردة and أبو بكر الصديق is the خليفة and he asked the advice what should we do he asked the صحابة what should we do and عمر بن الخطاب says we were ordered to fight till they say لا إله إلا الله and these people still say لا إله إلا الله we shouldn't fight them and some of the other Sahaba have suggested, wait a little bit, let's focus and let's uh, uh, concentrate the power and secure al Medina and Mecca and then we go and fight. But Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and he's the one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described him, if you put his iman in one scale and put the iman of all of us, of all the believers in one scale, his iman is more. He said, no, I will not give up on anything on one small thing that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said is part of Islam, I will not negotiate. And if I have to fight them alone, I will fight them alone. SubhanAllah. If he has to fight them alone, he will. And that's when Umar said, okay, hold on, hold on, we're all behind you. But it just shows the thinking. It wasn't a matter of just everybody wants war, let's go and fight and die. There are discussions and there are opinions and they are everybody and then they follow the leader. It's a matter of respecting the leader opinion, not, um, not just anything. It reminds me when the Romans used to pay the taxes to the, to the Muslims and the new Roman emperor came and he decided he doesn't want to pay any taxes anymore. And he writes to Harun al-Rashid saying, the emperor 